guys and welcome to Hara Gastro. In today's video, we will be talking about small bowel cancer. So let's get started. So to begin, let's do a quick review about what the small bowel is. The small bowel, also called a small intestine, is an essential part of the digestive system. Its function is to break down food and nutrients and absorb them into the body's bloodstream. It links the stomach to the large intestine, which is also called the colon. The small bowel is divided into three parts. The duodenum is the part closest to the stomach and is the first part of the small bowel. So if you look at my little picture on the right, you can see the duodenum, which is the first part of the small intestine, and it's depicted here in that yellow color. So that is the first part. We then have the jejunum, which is the middle portion of the bowel, and in my little picture here, it's in blue. And finally, we have the ileum, which is the bottom section and is the portion that also connects to the large intestine or the colon. So this last little bit, which is like in a violety pink color, is the ileum and that connects to the colon. The length of the small intestine can vary greatly. In some, it is as short as 2.75 meters, just 9 feet, and in others, it is as long as 10.49 meters, which is about 34.4 feet. The average length of the small bowel in a living person is about 3 to 5 meters. So now let's get into some specifics. So what is small bowel cancer? Small bowel cancer occurs when healthy cells in the lining of the small bowel change and grow in an uncontrolled manner, forming a mass which is also called a tumor. These masses or tumors can be malignant or benign. A malignancy means that these masses can spread to other parts of the body and cause harm to different bodily organ systems. These changes can take a long time to develop in some cases and both genetic and environmental factors can contribute to such changes. So this is a picture of our small bowel and you can see from the inner lining which is actually the mucosal layer of the small bowel we have this mass of cells which is dividing in an uncontrolled manner and that is a site of cancer in the body. So what are the risk factors of small bowel cancer? Age. According to the National Cancer Institute, the average age of diagnosis is 67 years old. Gender. Men are slightly more likely to develop the disease than women. Some inherited conditions may also lead to the development of small bowel cancer. They include familial adematosis polyposis or FAP syndrome, hereditary non-polyposis colorectal cancer, also called Lange syndrome, putz jeghers syndrome, and cystic fibrosis. So these are inherited conditions which predispose somewhat the patient to the development of small bowel cancer. Tobacco and alcohol use. There is a lot of evidence linking cigarette smoking and alcohol abuse to the development of small intestine cancer. Diet. Eating a high-fat diet is a small intestine cancer risk factor. Chemical exposure. Certain chemicals like vinyl chloride, dioxins and high doses of herbicides containing phenoxyacetic acid are considered to be an intestinal cancer risk factor. Having certain gastrointestinal diseases also increase the risk of developing small intestine cancer. These associated diseases are colon cancer, celiac disease and Crohn's disease. So these gastrointestinal diseases or GI disorders also tend to be linked with small bowel cancers. The five types of small intestine cancer. The types of cancer that are found in the small intestine include adenocarcinomas, sarcomas, carcinoid tumors, gastrointestinal stromal tumors, and the lymphomas. So now let's take each of these and explain them further. Small bowel adenocarcinomas. Approximately 40% of malignant small intestine tumors are adenocarcinomas. This makes them the most common type of small intestine tumor. Small bowel adenocarcinomas show a specific trend because most of these tumors tend to cluster away from the colon toward the gastric end of the small intestine. Approximately 50% of these arise in the duodenum, 30% in the jejunum, and 20% in the ileum. Usually, this type of cancer will develop out of small benign non-cancerous growths called polyps. In addition, genetic analysis of the small bowel adenocarcinomas 
show positive expression of the KRAS mutation, the P53 gene, and SMAD4 or DPC4 gene. So this is a little endoscopic image of the adenocarcinoma, which is in the duodenum. And as we said above, uh, they tend to cluster towards the gastric end of the small intestine. So not lower down, but more upper. So most of them are found in the duodenum and the jejunum, and a few of them are found in the ileum. And also keep in mind that this is the most common small bowel malignancy. The small bowel sarcomas. Small bowel sarcomas are rare, accounting only for 10 to 15% of small bowel cancers. They are made up of three different subtypes of cancers, which include the leiomyosarcomas, which are cancers of smooth muscle cells, angiosarcomas, which are cancers of the blood vessel cells, and malignant peripheral nerve sheath tumors, which are cancers of the cells that support and protect the nerve. And in my picture on the right, you can see this is an example of a leiomyosarcoma of the small bowel. And leiomyosarcoma means that the tumor is actually comprised of smooth muscle cells, hence the name leiomyosarcoma. Small bowel carcinoid tumors. Gastrointestinal carcinoid tumors form from a certain type of neuroendocrine cell, a type of cell that is a nerve cell and a hormone-making cell. These cells are concentrated in the GI tract. Neuroendocrine cells make hormones that help control digestive juices and muscles used in moving food through the stomach and the intestines. A GI carcinoid tumor may also make hormones and release them into the body. These tumors account for about 35 to 42 percent of small bowel cancers. These tumors also tend to occur most frequently in the ileum and are often slow-growing malignancies. So these type of tumors form mostly in the ileum, which is that last part of the small bowel. And I put in a series of pictures below. You can see the multiple uh, carcinoid tumors within the small bowel. And these form from a neuroendocrine cell, which is a nerve cell, which also secretes hormones. Small bowel gastrointestinal stromal tumors, or the GIST tumors. Gastrointestinal stromal tumors are uncommon tumors of the GI tract. These tumors start in very early forms of specialized cells in the wall of the GI tract called the interstitial cells of Kajal. The interstitial cells of Kajal are cells of the autonomic nervous system, the part of the nervous system that regulates body processes such as digesting food. The interstitial cells of Kajal are also sometimes called the pacemakers of the GI tract because they signal the muscles in the GI tract to contract, to move food and liquid along. From the biopsy of the GIS tumor, the histopathologist will identify characteristics to properly diagnose them. These are spindle cells in 70 to 80 percent of them and epithelioid cells in 20 to 30 percent of them. Smaller tumors can usually be found in the muscularis propria layer of the intestinal wall. So if you look at my little image down below, you can see these are the layers of the small intestine. These are the innermost and then we have the outermost here. And you can see the muscularis layer, which is in between here. And this is where the gist tumors occur in the muscularis propria layer of the intestinal wall. Large ones grow mainly outward from the bowel wall until the point where they outstrip the blood supply and necrose and die on the inside, forming a cavity that may eventually come into contact with the bowel lumen. So eventually from this muscular layer, it'll push through until it's actually within the lumen of the small bowel. When a GIST is suspected, as opposed to other causes for similar tumors, the pathologist can use immunohistochemistry, which means specific antibodies that stain the molecule CD117, also known as C-KIT. 95% of all GISTs are CD117 positive. Other possible markers include CD34, DOG1, Desmin, and Vimentin. Other cells that show CD117 positively are the mast cells. The small bowel lymphomas. Small bowel lymphomas are responsible for 15 to 20 percent of all small intestine cancers. Small intestine lymphomas start in the lymph tissue of the small bowel, which means they are an immune system disease that originates within the intestines and usually occur in the jejunum. So the jejunum is that second bit of the small bowel. The typical subtype is non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, more specifically MALT, which is a form of lymphoma involving the mucosa-associated lymphoid tissue, 
large B-cell lymphoma, immunoproliferative small intestine disease, and Burkitt's lymphoma. So now let's get into some signs and symptoms of small bowel cancer in general. The patient may present with fresh blood in the stool, which is called hematochesia. They may present with dark or black stools, which means digested blood in the stool, and that is called melena. They may present with diarrhea, a lump in the abdomen, pain or cramps in the abdomen, weakness and fatigue, low red blood cell counts because of little bits of blood that is lost from their bleeding tumour, which is anemia, unexplained weight loss, and episodes of abdominal pain that may be accompanied by severe nausea or vomiting. Staging of small bowel cancer. Adenocarcinomas are typically staged using the American Joint Committee on Cancer's TNM system. Some types of cancers like carcinoid tumors do not have a standard staging system. In this case, the spread of cancer is simply defined as localized, regional, or distant. The combined categories T, N, and M create the stages 0 through to 4. The tumors are rated on a scale of 0 to 4 where TO indicates no evidence of primary tumor expanding into local tissue, and the increasing numbers T1 to T4 describe the extent of the spreading tumor into and through the intestinal wall. Carcinoma in situ, TIS, describes early cancer that has not gone beyond the mucosa. N, or node, if cancer is found in the lymph nodes, the quantity of cancer cells found is rated using N1 or N2. Conditions where the cancer has not spread to the lymph nodes is indicated by NO. Metastases, or M, cancer that has spread or metastasized, is indicated by M1. Otherwise, MO is used if there is no signs of metastasis. Each category, T, N, and M, is assessed and rated, and X is used to denote insufficient information, which means the condition of the particular factor cannot be adequately assessed. The intestinal cancer diagnostic evaluations. So how can we diagnose a small bowel cancer? The first thing we can use is a stool sample, which can be tested for blood, and this is done by a fecal occult blood test. We can also do an endoscopy or colonoscopy, and this looks inside the duodenum and the upper part of the jejunum from above, through the throat and past the stomach, or the lower part of the ileum from below. Enteroscopy can investigate more of the small bowel, but it is more invasive and requires special equipment and training. There is also a pull with a small camera which can be used to assess the bowel, which is called capsule endoscopy. The pull is swallowed and then takes pictures periodically which are sent wirelessly to a computer where they can be viewed. And this is an example of the capsule endoscopy which is also called a pull cam and basically it is a little pull that is swallowed and it takes images of the small bowel as it travels throughout the GI tract. Barium x-rays, also known as a small bowel follow-through, in which the patient first drinks barium liquid which looks white on an x-ray and then gets a series of abdominal x-rays to follow the passage of the barium through the entire small bowel. Radiographical testing with the use of CT scans, ultrasound scans and other kinds of x-rays which can sometimes pick up small bowel tumors can also be used and can also see if the cancer has spread to other parts of the body and an MRI may also be ordered if liver involvement is suspected which can occur with carcinoid tumors. Treatment Surgery the main treatment option for small bowel cancer is surgery to remove the tumor, which is excision, and to reconnect the remaining bowel, which means anastomosis. Surgery may also be needed for relief of a bowel obstruction, which means an intestinal bypass when the obstructing tumor itself cannot be removed. Chemotherapy Chemo may also be given either in combination with radiation therapy or surgical therapy, or by itself as a single treatment in select cases. Several chemotherapy medications may have some efficiency in the treatment of small bowel cancer. These include capacitabine, oxaliplatine, fluorouracil, irintacine, and leucovarine. These medications are also typically used in combination. So continuing the treatment, we can also use radiation therapy, but this plays a smaller role than surgery in the management of small bowel cancers. In some cases, it can be used post-operatively if there is tumor left behind or if there are close surgical margins 
meaning that the cancer cells were close to the edge of the tissue removed to clean up any microscopic tumor cells. And finally, immunotherapy, which can also be done. One use of non-standard oncological therapy for tumor is interferon. Interferon is a medication used for some types of small bowel cancers, typically carcinoids. This medication works by activating the body's immune system to fight the cancer. For gastrointestinal stromal tumors of the small bowel, there is a large role for the targeted therapy medications including imatinib, sunitinib, and regorafenib. And that brings us to the end of the presentation. Thank you guys so much for watching. I do know this video was a bit long and uh, it was a bit in-depth and I do hope that you understood everything that I was trying to explain. Please be sure to like, comment, subscribe and share and also if you'd like to download a copy of this presentation you can do so by clicking the link in the description. Take care and bye for now.